Now, um, this being Hanlon's Point is the most western part of the islands, uh, but all of the islands are connected via bridges and pathways, so you could make your way from here all the way to the eastern island, which would be Ward's Island. So you could cycle your way around, you could walk. Uh, something that you'll notice though, not a lot of cars here on the Toronto Islands, that's something you're not permitted to do is drive. The Toronto Islands are the largest urban car-free community, so no personal vehicles allowed, yourself or myself not allowed to drive here. Any vehicles you do see are all service vehicles, um, so fire trucks, ambulance, garbage trucks, uh, but no personal cars. I do want to point out as well too, as we cruise along the islands today, uh, just to observe the different types of wildlife that you'll come across, particularly birds. Uh, that's largely due to the location of the Toronto Islands, which is in between two major North American flyways, so kind of like a highway for birds. This is, this is often where they'll stop in between migration season. Now, if you're a keen bird watcher, you can see everything from warblers, wrens, black-crowned night heron, egrets. Uh, the common birds I've seen uh, as of late, I'm sure you've noticed some of them hanging out on the trees, very dark colored birds or cormorants. Um, so anytime they dip in the water or take a dip in the water, they have to dry off completely. So they'll often hang out in the trees. I'll try to point them out if I see any. So yeah, cormorants are the, again, the, the darker colored birds. Uh, swans are also quite abundant on the islands as well. Two types to look out for, there's the common mute swan with S-shaped necks and orange colored beaks. Um, so we may see a, a few of those. The less common ones, quite special when we do see them, are the tundra or whistling swans. Uh, they are endangered, so we do tag them. The Toronto Island residential um, community uh, tags them just to keep track of how many remain. I've only ever seen two. So that, definitely point out those whistling swans to distinguish them. They have straight necks and black colored beaks. But now that we are in the, really the western channel of the islands here in the lagoons, you can clearly see that it's not one big chunk of an island, but several smaller series of islands. Any ideas how many there are in total? I'm not sure if I mentioned already. Fourteen. That's right, fourteen. You You're the first person right. to get that right. You said it before. Did I? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, fourteen islands, center island being the largest of the fourteen. Um, you can take the city ferries to get here, of course. Uh, they dock either on Hanlon's Point, Center Island, and Ward's Island would be your other option. Now, if you're wondering where the amusement park is, some people confuse it. Center Island is actually located, or Centerville, the amusement park, located on Middle Island. great place to plan a picnic and spend a summer day. Uh, a few restaurants and bars that you can find on Center and Middle Island. And beaches as well. Uh, Hanlon's Point here, home to the clothing optional beach. Uh, that's on the far west side. We don't pass by that way. Now if you take a look to your right hand side here, or far off to the right hand side, You'll see the Gibraltar's Lighthouse. So the lighthouse was built in 1808. It's the oldest uh, existing building. 
214 years old. As well, you might notice the AM radio transmission towers. I often get questions about it just over your right shoulder there. They stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, but they're the AM radio transmission towers for Chin Radio Station, C-H-I-N, which was actually Canada's first multilingual broadcaster. Now Canada, of course, very multicultural. Toronto specifically, the most diverse city in the entire world. Um, so lots of different people here who speak different languages. English is the most common language spoken. Any ideas what the second most common language would be? Okay, I hear a lot of French. That's obviously the obvious yes, um, but that's not correct. So guess again. Mandarin, I heard someone say that would be the correct answer. Mandarin. <laughs> Cantonese would follow at third. Uh, Tagalog, which is the Filipino language, is fourth. Uh, and uh, Tagalog at fourth, Spanish at fifth, Italian at sixth. Uh, I believe French ranks 13th on that list, so quite a ways down. <laughs> Just goes to show you how diverse the city is. Now I talked a little bit about the birds earlier. I failed to mention the other types of wildlife that you can find uh, within the water. If you do enjoy fishing, that is something that you can do here. Uh, but on the islands, we have a catch and release policy. Pretty self-explanatory. Anything you catch, you do have to release back into the waters. But some examples of fish you can find here are carp, pike, yellow perch, rock bass. And besides the fish, we've seen everything from turtles basking on logs to beavers, raccoons, muskrats. Coyotes, one year we did spot a few coyotes. What we think happened is when the harbor froze over, they probably walked from the mainland over here. And then of course, summer melts the ice, so they've been stranded out here. So yeah, you never, you never really know what you'll see on the islands. One little girl even told me she saw a unicorn. So tell me if you see that one. But as we loop around here, quite peaceful and serene on the island, so I'll give you a, a bit of a break from my voice. I'll also walk around, take some questions if you're wondering anything. Uh, definitely let me know. Just to remind you, we do have a bar on the lowest level, so if you'd like some refreshments, uh, now's a great time. I'm going to jump back on the microphone just as we exit the island. So I'm going to spend some time talking about the residential islands, how you go about acquiring one of those homes. Uh, but until then, you can just sit back, relax, and enjoy.